Hello everyone, this is Sherry, and this is Blue, and you're watching Lessons Learned. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quilt top with this layer cake, Wyndham Fabrics 5 and 10 by Denise Schmidt. It's a very springy pattern of fabrics, and we are going to do a pinwheel design. This will go together very fast and easy, not a lot of thinking. Save your cardboard for templates. And then here are our fabrics. We have some lights and some darks as usual two of each and I'm going to alternate these out I'm going to go ahead and set some of them out so that I can see what I'm dealing with here's a pretty green two of those and a blue here's some plaid that are kind of on the light side get the, the white background Here's a dark, uh, looks like uh, sun, moon, sun, or something like that. Three of those. Nice to have some extra darks. Here's an orange one of that same. Here is a navy with white and orange. Two of those yellow with orange and white bright and pretty now we have some stripes here's two blues and two orange and two yellow the orange has a, a red and a pink in it and the green has a two shades of green i mean the blue one the lighter blue and then this yellow one has two shades of green in its stripe. Here's a smaller checker plaid. One of these over here. Probably not going to be able to see them all at the same time, but just wanted you to get a, a look at what we have to work with here if you decide to use this layer cake. Those are all the same. Here's some more lights with a light blue fabric I mean a light yeah light blue flower and then here's a green with a yellow flower and a red with a blue white flower with blue um, um, stems and leaves so I'm going to take this and we're going to do a pinwheel pattern with it we don't really need a pattern per se these are 10 inches square of course because it's a layer cake but what we will be doing is putting a light and a dark together, or at least two completely contrasting colors together and patterns, contrasting patterns as well, to get our pinwheels. And to do that, all we have to do is take one of our lights, as an example, and put it with our dark right sides together. And so all the way around, the entire square not leaving any sort of opening with a quarter inch stitch so I'm going to go ahead and match these up into stacks so that I can go ahead and chain piece all of these together Okay, somehow we have an extra. Sometimes they'll put an extra in, or I've got two together here. Let me double check. <coughs> Here's my extra, and they'll go together just fine. Occasionally these uh, 
pre-cuts will have a, an extra piece in it. So they say. That's never happened to me. <laughs> okay, so now I'm headed over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam with white thread all the way around all four sides of each of these pairs. Be right back. Okay, so I have all of my 10 inch squares sewn all the way around all the edges. And now I'm just going to go through and cut them diagonally both ways. I want to try not to move these. I'm just measuring from the tip of one end to the tip of the other. More according to where I turn the corner with my stitches than anything. Now we have half square triangles. So I'll be ironing these open or no I won't. I'll be ironing these towards the dark side and then arranging them in this fashion. Oops, not like that. Not like that. You have to really watch yourself. <laughs> okay, so this one goes this way. There we go. So there you have a pinwheel. So once I get all of these cut and pressed, then I will be taking them side to side. And then once that's one piece, and this is one piece will go this way. This will end up being a 12 inch block and I'll show you how to square them up when I get one done. Okay so now that I have my half square triangles all finished um, I've got four here that goes to one particular block and I'm going to square these up before I sew them together. So to do that, take your six and a half inch, if you have it, Omni Grid, or any other that you have that has this 45 degree line on it, you're going to line that up to your seam that you just sewed, leaving a little bit of fabric sticking out on all four sides. I'm going to cut two sides. These two sides, since I'm right-handed going to turn it and do the other two sides. Now you have two even sides. You can match these up to the very edge and then your 45 degree line here should still line up. If it doesn't you can adjust a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out not cut out but trim out these four uh, these other three and these four together I will sew together I'll show you how I'm going to do that let's go ahead and do these okay so now how to arrange these to get our pinwheel so all of your points are going to want to meet in the middle <coughs> So you'll have a, a left to the bottom and a left to the top that, and it should be the darkest color and then it's just the opposite on the bottom. Dark on the right, dark on the bottom. That makes sense? Dark on the bottom, dark on the top, dark on the bottom, dark on the top. They all meet in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two, chain stitch these, and then a um, quarter inch seam here and here. And then I will open those seams up and press them. So what I'll do is I'll chain stitch these here and here. And I'll come back and show you the next seam line. 
these are two blocks that I just chain pieced and also I uh, wanted to mention that I sewed from the single single layer area down to the double layer area like go through the machine like this and end on the point on both of those pieces so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the iron and I'm going to open the seam press it open on both of these after I do that I'm going to connect my two pieces in the center and I will also be opening that seam to press it so when I come back we should have a complete pressed block So there's our pinwheel and everything joined up pretty nicely there. This does leave a little bit of a bulkiness here. If you do decide to take some of the bulk out of this, be very, very careful not to cut all the way through and have a hole in your quilt. There's really no repairing that. So um, I, I don't mind it. It's a little bulkier than I would like normally. But if you get those seams pressed down nicely, it should be okay. Also, when I sewed these two sections together, I put a pin here to make sure those two already, pre already pressed seams were uh, where they should be. And my ends came out pretty, pretty perfectly. There's just a millimeter or two there off. So you shouldn't have to square up this block. This should be a, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Looks like a 12 and a half inch block. So once it's sewn into your quilt with the quarter inch seam that you'll have all the way around, it should be a 12 inch finished block in the quilt. So once we have all of our blocks done, we should have 21 and we'll lay those out. So here are all of your blocks once they're done put together. You could actually attach them just like this. Uh, back it and bind it and you're done. It would be a quilt of 48 by 60 finished. You could put sashing between the blocks and a wide border or a not so wide border backing and binding if you wanted to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to show you also a black and white picture so that you can see that I have distributed the color tones and depth of color fairly evenly and then also the block to the right is the extra one I had. We ended up with 21 blocks out of the 42 layer cake and that particular block looked a little too solid to me and I didn't really have any other blocks that looked quite as uh, non-contrasting within itself as uh, that one so that's the one I chose to keep out and not use. I'll just put it in my orphan block stash. So stay tuned uh, for the next episode in this series and we'll be deciding if we want to do sashing and borders and I'll show you how to do that if we do or we'll just be backing and binding it. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.